guys, Kevin with On Point Pro Styles in Gainesville, Georgia, back with another video. This video is going to be uh, showing you the tint cutting software that I use for my plotter. It's called Film Cut from PlotterDepot.com. I have the Workhorse 2 plotter also from plotter, PlotterDepot.com. I've got a 2021 uh, Dodge Charger in, needs the windows done, so I figured why not? Let's take a look at the software, how easy it is to use, how I use it in my shop. We'll cut the patterns out, we'll weed them, we'll even install a couple so you can see the alignment and see what they look like. So let's get to it. So diving right in, this is the main user interface for the film cut software. Pretty simple, not much here, but that's what makes it so easy to use. So first thing I'll show you is the options tab. Definitely something to look at if this is your first time or consider using it. They do have a default layout when you open the software. Mine is set to nesting, so this is the screen you'll see. There is a cut list, uh, they're simple. Those are two that I just don't use. They seem to be more of a high production of the same types of cars that would be best used for those but the nesting I like to move things around and get the most out of my film so that's where it is default unit inches um, millimeters might be useful to some I use inches uh, plotter uh, pull mode they added this a few months ago this is a major improvement highly recommended this is where the patterns will only cut when the film is being pulled back into the machine so it will uh, pre-feed the amount of film it needs out of the front of the machine and then start cutting as it's pulling back in so it helps not bunch up the film and doing the pushing and pulling thing. Uh, I have the PPF software as well so I have that turned on. Post feed length on the Workhorse 2, uh, 2.3 inches I found is perfect for me anyways. It puts, it uh, post feeds after the patterns are cut approximately a quarter of an inch past my cut line so I don't waste much film after that. I could just cut it off and move on. Uh, setup plotter, uh, calibrates a whole nother thing. We'll do a video on that, um, but right now I'm just kind of showing you the basics. Setup plotter is where you'll go if you're just getting started and you need to link your plotter to the software you'd click set up plotter you get a list of plotters usually only one uh, you select that plotter click select and then that plotter is programmed into your software so super easy there uh, so we've got all that and let's get started so tint 21 whoops it is a Chrysler but label to Dodge Dodge Charger uh, you can see they put in a little bit extra four-door uh, sedan it covers the years 2015 to 2022 the nesting feature our list shows up down here we've got uh, multiple options that they've predetermined which is pretty neat you've got the back glass without the brake light cutout with the brake light cutout without the dot matrix on the top they do have a pretty heavy dot matrix on the top you have a single uh, left door single right door paradors um, you can manipulate and move the patterns around. You can spin them uh, to get the most out of your film. So that's a really cool feature. So that nesting feature, like I said, is why I use it. And then going on down the line, one quarter window, pair of quarter windows, back doors with quarters. So they've, they've really kind of put a lot of thought into that for you. So you can just select what you need. Um, boom, that's what I need. So last, you hit this cut button and literally it sends it to the plotter the patterns get cut out. So I'm gonna get over to the plotter, I'm gonna load my film, and we'll get these patterns cut out. So I've got my film in the plotter, ready to go. Um, I'm using a 20%, this is a 40 inch roll, superior charcoal. Um, so real quick note, this really isn't uh, a how-to, but just to kind of give you an idea, when I put a new roll of film in or I'm getting ready to cut, I generally try to pull uh, manually out as much film as I think is gonna be needed um, because it helps center the film on the machine. So if you pull it out, you've got tension on the front of the machine right here. So I just drag my fingers very lightly and lock the rollers down and that centers the roll so it doesn't track left or right, or at least as much. Um, smaller rolls, you gotta be a little bit more picky. With a bigger roll, that's generally all you need to do to get it centered up. So let me move my carriage head and the film back. On off, roll our film in. Move the carriage head over to where I want it to start cutting. I'm gonna hit the enter button. It's ready to cut. I'm gonna go hit the cut button as you saw and cut these patterns out. So 
So we're at my peel board. Um, it's for note, the liner side is on the glass. The film side is toward us. So I'm just gonna trim out. I can see where the uh, film is cut into. So I'm gonna trim out um, most of the excess around it and then we're gonna weed it out. So let me do that. Some people will grab a corner and tear away, leaving the doors exposed. Uh, I've done that as well, but I've also messed up a few patterns doing that, so. That's why I always keep my hand on the patterns when I'm pulling that, just in case. We've got two doors. There's always a start and a stop point on a pattern and those are usually points that aren't always 110% perfect. They might barely leave a, like a hairline gap. Usually you can tear right through them, but I use those as a breaking point because I like to peel mine a little bit different to be 100% safe. You're, there's a peel away and then there's a roll under. Peeling away is just literally pulling it, peeling it away. I actually roll it under so it's curled underneath itself. There's the other stop point. And then that's how I peel mine. Okay, so we'll get this one started. Roll it under. Now if you get to the top and it feels like it wants to hang, I use my thumbnail and just bump it, and then it just continues. There it is, two patterns. So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna put them on the door on the exterior. Um, I shrink side doors on most vehicles. They're not flat, so I'll create some fingers along the bottom. I'm gonna shrink them. Next thing I wanna show you is I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get the rest of the doors or the rest of the windows cut out and ready. And then we're gonna start to install one. I'm gonna get it to where you can actually view the top cuts and the overlaps in the sides and the bottom. So let me get some stuff going. Let me get to that point and we'll check that out too. So I've got the film to this point. This is a back passenger door um, so that you can get a view of this top uh, edge. So let me get you in close. That's a tight top gap. So very clean, very nice. These are some of the best patterns I've ever worked with. I'm gonna get it tucked in. We're gonna look at the overlap and look at the bottom. So we're overlapped, I want to say almost a quarter of an inch on both sides, so that's fantastic. The bottom tucked really easy, so it's just below this uh, bottom sweep, which is what we want, makes two staging uh, fairly easy. Not all patterns are going to be absolutely perfect, but 
Um, these are some of the best patterns that I found. So we're about an eighth below the lower gasket. We're a little, uh, I'm sorry, about a total quarter inch. So we're a little more than an eighth past on both ways. And you saw the top gap. So I'm gonna do this quarter window. Let's see how well that one goes. I know it's hard to see uh, the quarter window with the molding he's got on the outside of the door, um, but let me assure you, it fell right into place, tucked again about an eighth below the, the bottom gasket, which is great, leaves no light gaps. It butted up right to the front line, right to the top, and it's trimmed off. It's close, uh, a little more than a sixteenth over the ceramic border, but hey, no light gaps, it's covered. Last but not least, let me get the front door prepped and ready and installed, and we'll take a look at the same thing, the top line on it, the overlap on the sides, and the overlap on the bottom. So here's the front door installed. Pretty great if you ask me. By the way, I did say earlier that I was installing 20%. I installed so much of that that I actually forgot that this was a rare breed and wants 35%. So I recut everything. It's not a super light, ridiculous 20%. In fact, 35%. But back. <sighs> Nothing's going to beat hand cut, but man, that is absolutely more than acceptable. I've seen worse hand cuts. Let me get the sides and bottom tucked in, finish it up. We'll take a look at the overlaps there as well. Same thing, maybe a tiny bit more on the bottom, so a little more than an eighth. So um, took a tiny bit longer to tuck, but not hard. So well overlapped in the front and the back. You saw the top gap. We're below the seal on the bottom. I don't know, I'm, I'm impressed. If you're not using it, give it a try. If you are using it, you know what I'm talking about. So guys, there it is. This car is done with the help of an easy to use, very precise, um, software film cut from plotterdepot.com. Uh, I was able to cut out all the doors and quarters, install them with ease. Uh, they fit very, very well. Uh, and I use this every single day in my shop. It's easy to get started. It's easy to get the, the software and your plotter set up and cutting. So there it is. I know it's not the same as seeing it in person, but hopefully you got a good general idea of what the top edges look like and what to expect. The overlaps on the front and back and the bottoms, they've taken a lot of time to um, critique many, many patterns for ease of install. Um, not too much on the bottoms. There's no reason to tuck so far into the sides. Um, so they've done a great job, but there it is. So it's not quite a day in the life of Kevin Rogers at his shop. However, this is what I do every single day using this software. So film cut, from plotterdepot.com. You saw me using it on my workhorse too. It's pretty air free. Uh, again, I've covered this fast to get started. Super easy to use interface. I mean, almost air free. They don't have all the extra stuff in there that yeah, maybe would be kind of cool for some people, but 
If you're just a tinner like me, I don't need all that extra stuff. I just need to plot some windows, make sure they're, you know, it's a good pattern. I can stick it on the car and move on to the next job. So hope that helps. If you're, if you're using it, thanks for watching. If you're uh, thinking about it, definitely give it a try. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. So if you need help, reach out to them, plotterdepot.com. They're glad to help. Reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Till the next one.